So I'm going to talk about our hail project now. So this has been a, a fun project to delve into and I have to give hats off to the Alberta Pulse Commission because they were the sole funder that stepped up to fund this project and this is one that has honestly come from the membership. We've heard left, right and centre that we would love to know a little bit more about how to deal with crops that have been damaged by hail. So the trick is, is how do you study this, right? I mean, everybody says, go out and find a hail damaged crop and study it. But hail doesn't happen evenly. You know, Andy was one of the guys here that uh, the tractor is soothing, isn't it? So this is, this is a shot of the hail simulator that we were able to build and it's nothing more than chains rotating on a drum. And we came to that uh, simple approach to simulating hail thanks to the Alberta Innovate Technology Future folks, Ralph Lang and uh, Rod Wurznick. They've been working with AFSC for honestly doing training for their hail adjusters. How do you know how to go out there and identify is this 50%. So it literally did start with a dog chain that you just saw by hand going out and beating up the crops. So I said again I'm lazy and fat so we have to mechanize it right. And as it turns out uh, Kirchner machine put this together for us. We were able to test it out on a canola research trial this year and we did an awesome job at actually simulating damage. So those of you that were at the field school this year got to actually see it and when, when you go out there it, it really does look like hail. So AFSC actually funded our, our first trial which was really kind of you know more about learning how to use the hail machine properly but we did have the AFSC folks out and rate all of these plots that we damaged in canola at various stages. So we went from the rosette stage and basically a week after all the way up to flowering and you can see we can beat up some crops so if you uh, are unhappy with your crop, you can give us a call and we'll come destroy your crops. We're, we're working on the field scale model. Uh, the only problem is, is that I think this is only going to work for the CTF guys because otherwise they're going to see tracks. Um, but if I, if I rigged it up on the controlled traffic farming, we could probably get away with this. So the, the other idea behind this is first of all, not just understanding the dynamics of hail and how well crops are able to recover, there's this whole other world of is there something we can physically do management wise to help improve the crops. So going in and spraying a fungicide for example or maybe a micronutrient blend and there are actually a lot of products on the market that are making these claims uh, as rescue products and if they don't have a hail simulator I kind of question how they actually understand how well they work because if you go out into a field scale setting, like I said, first of all, the variability, the spatial variability of the damage is huge. Then you're also dealing with the inherent variability in the field setting. And you have no way of saying whether that treatment actually resulted in a response, whether it was attributed to hail or whether an unhailed crop would have responded the exact same way. So that was one of our challenges in the funding world as far as uh, moving along and, and getting an actual hail simulator built. Couldn't get past the fact that we were going to try to make a projectile based simulator. So literally out there, and they've done this in the states in corn, literally made like air cannon hail machines and go out and beat up plots. Well that, it, it's not really feasible because it's not even and it's, it's a real challenge and in a sense I only cared about if I could simulate the damage itself and the chain method ended up working well. So this is uh, the results of our canola trial and you can see that canola and I think everybody knows canola is an incredibly plastic crop and if you have an early enough damaged event that it has a really good opportunity at improving or coming back. So along here, is my mouth showing up there guys? So out of bolting, this is our, our unhailed check at 3500 kgs per hectare. So at bolting a 25% hail damage only resulted in a small reduction in yield. But then we hit a point, you know, when you get down to even a, what we considered 100% hail, you go out there and it looks like there's absolutely nothing left. You still ended up with 50% yield. So it's pretty amazing what canola can do. 
But as we move down the time frame, so this would have been rosette, and then a week later, now all of a sudden our, our yield, even at 25%, has uh, dramatically reduced. The third week, now we're into flower, you know, pretty heavy flowering. Uh, our ability to, to actually recover, and this is not with any post-recovery treatments, but what it was was an opportunity to look at how well does hail or does canola recover from various types of damage and different timings. So when I compare that information uh, with, we just chart it differently as a percent of the simulated damage versus a percent loss, then these are the various response curves of that same data that I just showed you. And they all show kind of the same pattern. The gap between the lines is basically um, the overall loss difference between the timings of hail. Now I'm gonna look in each one of those timing and compare the actual results to the adjusters um, ratings. So the, the, the adjusters came in a week after we beat up the crop just like they would in, well, maybe like four weeks later, but depends on if they're busy. But usually they try to come in a week later. So this case, the red line is the AFSC results. And then the blue line, if it's showing up blue, is the actual results. So in this case, what's happening? Is the farmer happy in this case with AFSE? Yes. Yes. Right. And we probably know that. Any AFSE people here? Perfect. See, no. <laughs> so we all kind of know that. If, if we get an early hail on canola, you're kind of getting a good deal right now from adjusters. And that's why I asked if anyone's here. But what it does is it gives a farmer a tool to understand um, where the actual losses are versus what they're telling you and gives you a bit of a negotiating chip. I know that you all know that you can you could sweet talk an AFSC adjuster if you try hard enough. The physical way that they go out there and do that too is they'll usually pick four points across a field. What happens if they managed to pick a spot where the damage was light when you know another side of the field was really quite heavy? As we move down timeline, uh, we actually had a storm here so the adjuster couldn't make this one. But our next time setting, I was really impressed to see this. And that is now three weeks after the rosette stage, so we're, we're talking mid-flower. I was pretty impressed how close they were. I, I didn't know what kind of magic they were using out in that field. But you know what it does show is that at the lighter damage here, they're underrating you a little bit, and at the higher end, they're overrating you. So, but overall, uh, the fit was really quite nice. So what this does say is that my simulator works. I'm, you know, I'm glad about that because now we can really go into studying uh, whether the rescue treatments are effective or not. And then for the final rating, now this is again getting, this would be considered a late hail, July 24th we did this. And in all honesty, lines are still quite similar, but you can see at the low end, at the high end, there's differences that may end up being a bargaining tactic. Uh, the other thing that I'm excited in doing is actually working with uh, Dr. Ann Smith, who's a remote sensing expert with Ag Canada, and using drone technology. They, you know, so we, we have this NDVI that everybody hears about all the time. I th I'm wondering if this isn't an opportunity to actually put some practical use to it. If we could calibrate the imagery based on our plots, and then literally go out to a farmer's field and uh, go over a hail damage crop, with the right algorithm, we might be able to give the farmer a map that gives them the predicted damage, but also the spatial extent. So it, you'll know that the adjuster went out and picked points here, but you know that three quarters of your field was actually damaged. So if you had that real-time information, it might be a bargaining tool with the, with the adjuster, and it might also be uh, a, a tool to help you make decisions whether you want to plow down that crop or whether you want to keep half of the field or, or do something different, like say bale it. And that is about all I have for the hail. Are there any questions? Are you, are you looking at doing different crops next year? Because I hear there's a lot of issues with like, when it comes to like corn insurance, say from the north to the south. Yeah, and corn is actually a really good example. And, and the reason why corn is a good example is what happens when, ha when you have corn hailed? Anybody? Lifesaver at the, somebody throw a lifesaver at, Someone. No corn experts here? Going point. 
There's a new disease in corn that we've been hearing about. Goss's wilt. And that's actually uh, something that's related to the physical factor. So if you have corn that's damaged by wind or by hail, it now is, becomes a vector for Goss's wilt, which would be related to whether you should spray a fungicide or not. So I think it'd be a great idea to do that. We're not there yet. Uh, I only go where the money is. Right now the money's in pulses. And there's a reason for that too in pulses because there's a lot of anecdotal stories out there that have shown just absurd improvements uh, on a hail damaged say pea crop with the, the application of a strobulin fungicide. So I think that's, they're hearing it from their growers that they'd like to know whether this is true or not. So we're gonna be focused on pulses for now. Don? Um, I'm a little concerned your uh, simulator might be missing one important component an actual hailstorm. We have a pivot. Uh, are you running that all the time? Uh, Especially for the disease component unit. Yeah, and, and I think environment after a hail is going to be important as well. So we're going to try to simulate that by dumping some water on after we heat them up. Yeah. Good question, though. You get a lifesavers. I forgot that. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You could put the IOU lifesaver down. We'll, we'll pay you back. Any other questions? Uh, Lewis, you might as well start getting set up, and I'll somehow try to fill the time. Please, one more question. You guys. This was a test. Test for what? Here, Well, can I just comment? So, it works on Kelly. Did you do some work on Kelly's then? Sorry? Did you have some data on Kelly's? We have not, actually. This was meant to be year one in developing this and testing the simulator. It just so happened that we got lucky that the simulator worked, and then we didn't actually have to go beat that canola by hand, because that's what they did in Vegreville. Yeah. And then after talking to the Vegreville, the EFSC folks that were there, they said that their trial sucked compared to ours. Don't tell him I said that, but you know, it, you try to get an even damage by hand. <coughs> No rescue treatments yet, that'll start in this year. And we're gonna do dry beans, peas, and I think maybe faba beans as well. So thanks, next up is Lewis Barda, and he's gonna go over a really taxing project that we've been working on. This is a field scale project, looking at uh, the utility of soil sensors and applications in variable rate technology. But glad to have Lewis and Adil on board to take care of the big data side of this because it drives me absolutely nuts. So good luck, Lewis.